So hi, my name is Sami Mäkinen. I'm from the National Land Survey of Finland. And I'm going to talk about what we've done in one year. So basically from Oscari version 148 until now. So how many of you are developers? Oh, cool. I'll try not to be unfair and bore both groups equally. Um, so what's Oscari? Uh, we don't really have a marketing department and we don't know how to label ourselves. But we've been called library or framework or geoportal. And I was in a workshop uh, for Map Store and found that they are very similar to us. We have a very similar feature set and they used the term tool, so I stole it. But basically we have a server uh, that's uh, Java and built with Maven and the front end part is JavaScript that is built with Webpack. Uh, the server requires Postgres, PostGIS for the database and uh, we use Redis for caching things. And the thing that separates us, I guess, from the rest of the uh, similar products is uh, we don't really store any data on the Oscari, but use spatial data infrastructure. So, so uh, if you have a geo server running in different organizations or maybe just your own, you connect that uh, Oscari to the Geo server or map server or basically any OGC standard APIs and you show the results. You can combine and, uh, the data from different services and show nice maps. So basically what you can do, uh, the Arctic SDI Geo portal is, is built on top of Oscari, so you can do geo portals. And it all started out with the National Geo Portal of Finland. So this is kind of what the basic package looks like. But you can customize it and use different projections and anything like that. So, uh, We've done some, some, we use GitHub to store the code. Uh, we have a couple of repositories there. The main repository for the server part is Oscari server. Uh, but we have an extension mechanism that uh, when you build your own app, you don't need to modify the code inside Oscari server, but you can use this template repository to start building your own app. Uh, and we also had a sample application inside Oscari server. So we found out that that's what people tend to do. They just clone our Oscari server repository and start changing the code there until they are, uh, the fork they have is there, that has too many changes, though, so uh, upgrading versions is no longer very nice. So what we've done here is uh, we've actually taken out the sample application that we have entirely from Oscari server, so it's no longer a geo portal inside that, that repository, but we have another repository called sample server extension that is basically replacing the old server extension template. It serves the same purpose, but we've taken out the sample application from Oscari server and put it in another repository, so we don't have to maintain two samples. Uh, the same thing we've done with the front-end one. So Oscari front-end is the another repository we have. Uh, when we started out, we were really anxious to get all the 
contributions we could get inside it. But there was a problem that most of it was uh, some application-specific stuff, stuff that just confused people. Why, why we have different versions of the same functionality inside the repository. So we did a contributions repository next to the official Oscari frontend, where we moved all the non-maintained code or application-specific code. So it's easier to see what's actually working inside uh, the code base. And the same thing here, we changed the or move the sample application out of Oscari frontend. This is actually just happening as we speak. Uh, we will be releasing uh, version 1.53 uh, in September, and which has this uh, the sample application removed from the core libraries or repositories. And this is actually it's funny because. Uh, People have been, it's all, uh, it has been possible to do this already. Um, we've enabled using an application specific repository for application specific code. And people who are using it uh, have said that it's one of the best features we've added. So re we removed code, and people say it's the best thing we added. Okay, so uh, the front end is built with, was, it was built with NPM scripts, and we started using Grunt some years ago. Uh, I, I didn't really see any benefit from the NPM scripts there, but now we've migrated to Webpack. Uh, people are saying it's a bit difficult to configure and stuff like that, but I guess we're late enough, so so it hasn't felt that way to us. It, it, it has improved over the years. So what we've gained? Uh, we've gained a, a transpiler. We're using ba uh, Babel JS, like all the cool people. And we can use now the ECMAScript modules with imports, dynamic imports. Uh, we had the libraries that we're using in basically in folders inside the repositories. Now we've started using them through NPM, which is uh, sometimes very nice since we can use tools to detect vulnerabilities and stuff like that, but it has its own set of problems with libraries updating if you don't lock the versions and stuff like that. Uh, we've added also React support but a few words about the modules. So basically, bundles is a concept that you can, uh, each feature in Oscari is implemented as a bundle. Uh, the implement implementation files were um, defined by this JSON structure, which looks kind of verbose. It still is, uh, but now, going on, we will be using the imports, which looks a bit nicer. And the applications in Oscari was uh, defined, again, in a JSON format, which looks kind of verbose as well. Uh, that can be done uh, with imports as well. And we also have a lazy loader uh, using the dynamic imports, so Functionalities like the admin stuff that all users don't need are loaded lazily. Keeps the package that the end users have to load smaller that way. Okay, so we have tried our first steps in React. Uh, it's a bit of like going from the, actually the earlier version of the user interface was created with jQuery. It's kind of like going from object-oriented programming to functional. It's a bit of a, you have to twist your mind a bit. 
So uh, with jQuery, we had files that were almost 1,000 lines and stuff like that. This, we really want to keep things small and simple, and I think we can do it with this refactoring. Uh, there's an option how to use imports. We're using named imports. And, uh, well, this, the prop stuff is basically the functional programming stuff, so we want to keep the state close to the... At one point, we have a, the single source of truth and, and just update the UI based on that. Instead of jQuery, you, you toggle things all along the application and things might get out of sync. So what we've created so far with React, so we are still using jQuery, but the first one we did is this uh, language selector, so the end user can select the language for the user interface. We also created a, or rewrite the legend part of our thematic maps functionality. It's built on with React, and we are currently implementing the map layer administration part and the listing of the layers with React. Okay, so with React, we've chosen this uh, uh, UI component uh, library called AntDesign that says it's the world's second most popular. We're not sure we'll, we'll be using it, but we have a abstraction on top of it so we can switch the actual UI framework just to get different kind of com uh, UI components later on. And with React, styled components is used to have the small styling settings that's very specific to the different UI parts inside the code. So we don't get the large global CSS files. But there's a kind of a challenge. So we have used, it, used uh, SCSS for, for basically the global styles. And design uses less. Uh, now we've added styled components. So it's not something I'm proud of. I, I think we have to work on that a bit still. But it works. So some nice tools we've discovered uh, is called Storybook. It basically lets you de develop uh, React components outside of the scope of your application. So it's very much faster and try all the all, all the configuration parts, uh, get samples of those, and you can get back to and later on without going through the application to get the specific state of the component and see what it looks like. And we've added front-end test libraries. This chest is used. I think it's Facebook's library for creating front-end tests. We don't have a very good coverage yet, but we're work working on it. But uh, basically, we've added, uh, we had Travis CI compile the server parts already for a while, I guess, but we've added uh, Travis for front-end as well. We are using ESLint to check the syntax of the code so the files look similar and there's no, some file uses tabs to, for indentation and some file uses spaces and problems like that. So Travis runs ESLint and Chest and for the version part, server part, uh, JUnit, and we are running the ser compiling the server with OpenJDK 8 and 11 and the Oracle 11. Okay, so this is the biggest change, I guess, we've done on a year. So previously, the web feature service integrations were done in a different web app than the core, core Oscari. We've completely 
rewritten it. The previous ver version used, used um, WebSocket to com communicate with the uh, front end, and it was a, I guess it was a bit too configurable, which means complex. Um, now we are adding the code to the base Oscari web app, so you just have the one web app. We are going the popular way of doing a monolith instead of microservices. Uh, well, what it can do, uh, you can read features from uh, VFS 1.1.1 and 3 currently and output Mapbox vector tiles or GeoJSON to the browser. And we also have a complex features uh, parsing in a way that uh, everything that's complex in the attribute data, we prefix it the uh, attribute and store it as a basically serialized JSON as one of the attributes. Okay, so I'll have to hurry. One thing we we had uh, um, since we are building on on using services for from other organizations, some of those VFS services can be very slow. So we are protecting them with Hystrix. It's a circuit breaker that if the service gives a lot of errors, we stop sending requests to it. And one thing we came across for the slow services as, is that we had to add this service worker on, on the front end. So uh, the browser limits the amount of concurrent requests done to the same domain to six or something like that based on the browser. So we had to create our service worker that prior, prioritizes the request that the application uh, request that we do uh, can get through to the server and uh, possibly slow ones like calling other services that we need to proxy are in a low prio qui. So um, we, since we are bringing the features as vectors to the browser, we really had to step up with the styling. So we have a JSON format for styling the features that we use on the browser, and also uh, for printing out, uh, creating PDFs, we use the same JSON format to communicate the style that the features should be rendered in. Uh, but it's a simple styling. Um, You can't do anything, everything with it, so we support Mapbox styles as well. Uh, clustering has been added for the features in, in front end. We can do color animations, something that we added to the styles. You can hover the grid features, obviously, since they are vector features now on the browser, and we've improved the performance as well. Uh, another feature that we've improved a bit uh, or much is thematic maps. We've added time series support, diagrams. You can read the statistical data from the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals a data source. But there's another presentation about this on the Opera Room at 3. Uh, server stuff. So the previous VFS integration we had uh, uh, has a very strong dependency on a Chetty version. And we had to use pretty old version of Chetty. We've upgraded that and did uh, two releases that didn't have any other features differences between them but just that users can try if they want to upgrade to 1.49 and then comfortably 
without any new features, roll back the uh, or, or update their servers, and at the same time update the similar or compatible Oscari version. Um, so we also added the cross-site request for cherry protection, but we did it in a way that Spring Framework supports out of the box having cookies, but one of the features that we have is you can publish a map on another page, uh, which makes us use third-party cookies. Uh, some of the browsers have started blocking those, so we'll have to uh, modify it a bit to use some other way of basically same site cookies to work around that. Um, we've enabled asyn asynchronous controls, so you can start long running uh, operations on the server. And uh, just move. <laughs> it, OK, sorry. I'm out of time. I had too much. There's a bunch of fast stuff, so come talk to me. But we do have five minutes for questions, if anyone has them. No? Yes? OK. I missed the first few moments of the presentation, so I might be asking something you said already, but where does the name Oscari origin from? Uh, it's open source map window in Finnish, or the open source isn't, but the rest is. Anyone else? Thanks. Um, I think you mentioned you did the uh, 3D in the viewer or so? Yeah, the, we have the 3D. Yeah. 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 Um, what do you use to...? Uh, we, are, we have an abstraction around the map framework that you are using. So we currently, the default map engine or library that we use is open layers. But uh, we've created a CCM one as well. It's not part of Oscar yet, but it will be in during this year. So maybe you'll hear about it more next year. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any more questions? So you mentioned Postgres. What do you use Postgres for exactly? Because you also said that the geodata is not in the database, if I understood correctly. Oh, Maybe. Uh, there's an option for users to, uh, well, say, uh, draw on the map to create uh, polygons and, well, points and lines and also import shape files or GPX and stuff like that those things we store in, in our database. Any more questions? No? Okay, let's give another round of applause to Sami. Thank you. Thank you.